Hey everyone, my name is Chris, and today I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough of this game, Big Easy Busking, designed by Joshua J. Mills, and published by Weird Giraffe Games, solo design by Carla Kopp, the president of Weird Giraffe Games. So I'm going to be showing you this in prototype format. So just to clarify, all of the card art, the symbols, the tokens, everything about this is in prototype form. I'm using my own little mini poker chips here to represent ones and fives. So if you're wondering what the denominations are, you will see that I'm going to start here. I'm going to be playing as the white uh, the white cubes. This will be my band here. Drums, saxophone, and trumpet. These are my starting songs. I'll be able to purchase new songs from the Melody Market. I'll be able to play these jazz standards up here by paying the cost shown here. Once they're used, they flip over to the other side to show that they're more expensive. And I'm going to be trying to play to these crowds to win the majority bonus if I have more cubes here than the computer player at the end of the rounds. And if I reach this number here, these are the threshold payouts. Those threshold payouts will pay to everybody who has at least that many cubes on there. As I'm playing against this, the AI bot, I should explain a little bit. The deck is made up of all of the remaining player cards, uh, the, these basic starter player cards, that have not been used because, uh, you know, the other four or five players worth of cards shuffled up together. And now this is randomly going to be their deck. All of their energy cubes are out and about, ready to use. They don't have to break them down by uh, instrument or anything because it'll just be, they'll just be able to play a simplified turn, flip over a card, put out a song somewhere. The way that you do that depends on which mode you're playing with. You, I am gonna be playing with follow, follow bot. So you could be playing with follow bot or threshold bot or moody bot. So basically there's three different variants as of right now in the, uh, in the process. Like I said, everything's prototype still. But as of right now, I'm going to be playing versus the following bot, whose general turn structure is going to be to try and play to the crowds I've already, I'm already like currently playing to, so that they can try and beat me to these majorities here. Now, all that being said, I'm excited to get started, and uh, the 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 follow bot, the CPU player, is going to be taking the first turn. As they don't have a song to finish, we're going to jump right here to playing a song. They also don't have to pay out tips to get more energy. They just have all the energy available to them. Whereas I am going to have to be paying out money if I want to try and put energy back into my band members. So it's immediately going to make it tougher. So this one here, oh, I should, uh, I'm going to send out the mood tokens to see what moods the songs are going to have. All right. So the first song that the computer player is going to be playing is this one here. It's going to take four energy, one sax, one trumpet, and two drums. But like I said, they're all just kind of generic energy for the uh, for the computer player. And it's going to try and it's going to try and follow me. It's going to try and play to the crowd that I'm currently playing to. But there is not one of those crowds, right? So instead, this one's going to come here to the leftmost song that matches mood, which is why these tokens are important. This song does not match moods. This song doesn't match with this crowd. It does match here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this four energy right there. Now, uh, when it finishes, so at the start of its next turn, it'll take the finish song part of its turn. And you'll see how the, the matching mood and the non-matching mood matters. So I'll go ahead and um, that threshold payout's only okay. This one's really good. Uh, whew, all right. So what I, think, uh, what I think that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I want to see what it's going to do. So I'm going to spend three energy to purchase a new song. So this is how, this is what this turn would look like. Instead of playing a song, I can purchase a new song from the Melody Market, take this one, add it into my, my available lineup of cards. This one will get replaced. And Shibuya, that is the end of my turn. If this is your first time seeing how this game is going to get played, this is going to be a really good educating moment for you. There's three steps to every turn. The first step is to finish a song. So anything that you started playing, anything that you assigned, you see you don't move the cubes out immediately. You're going to finish it at the start of your next turn. The second thing is something that uh, the computer player doesn't do, which is what I mentioned, optionally tipping money. From your, from your personal bank to put energy cubes back into your band. Computer player doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, and then the last action is either, either play a song or purchase a song or else you're gonna pass. Uh, now the player, computer player is gonna finish a song. So let's see what it does here. The moods do match, 
which is what it intentionally is trying to do. So it's going to leave enough energy cubes here to hit this threshold bonus. So it's going to put two cubes out, and it's going to try and hit that threshold bonus, in this case only two cubes. The remaining ones will come back to it so that they can use that in the future. This one's face up, it's discarded, and now it's going to go ahead here and play a song again. That was just the finishing a song, optionally, for human players would be tipping, and the last part is to play or purchase songs. The computer player does not purchase songs, so it's only going to be playing. So this is going to be interesting to beat. Carla has mentioned to me that it is difficult. So I put out this song, it has the mask symbol. I'm going to look for the first, uh, the first one that has a matching mask symbol. So it's going to go right over here, it's going to match moods, so that's going to be its whole turn. I, on the other hand, need to try and make some big, some big moves here. Um, ouch. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is going to be hard to try and kind of out, uh, out do this. So I'm going to spend three energy, one of each, from my sax, from my drums, and from my trumpet, and I'm going to take all three of it and line it up right over here with this song. This is the song that I want to be playing to. Um, I didn't have anything to finish, and I didn't want to tip, so all I did was play a song. End of my turn, back to the computer player. Computer player is going to finish the song first, so it's going to put out, because the moods do match, it's going to put out as many energy tokens as it needs to hit the threshold. The threshold for this song is only one, and so all of these remaining cubes are going to come back to it, this song is now played and discarded, and now we're going to go ahead and move to the next step, which is to play a song. Uh, it's going to play this one. It's going to take three energy cubes. One, two, and three. Now, its first priority is to play to the song, that, the crowd that I'm playing at. So it's going to take its three energy song and put it right here, and it's going to compete with me for this crowd which, of course, that makes it difficult. Now you'll see the moods don't match, and so the AI process is going to be a little bit different on its next turn. Computer player's turn is done. It's going to pass over to me. First thing that I will do on a turn is finish a song. You'll see that I have these three energy. When the moods match, heart to heart, or mask to mask, or whatever, I have the option of either putting out all the energy cubes and earning a $1 tip, or I could put out at least one energy cube, take the remainder of the cubes and put the energy back into my band. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and boink, put all three energy out, earn that one dollar tip that I mentioned. This song is now played of mine. It is going to be done. So I flip it face over. I cannot play it again this round, which is why it's important to try and play uh, purchase songs to play or to do these, uh, <laughs> to do the jazz standards. That's my turn, or that's my finish action. I can choose to tip. I don't need a tip yet, so I'm going to hold on to my money. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play a song, and I want to play probably to this crowd. Yeah, so I'm going to take two saxophone energy and two trumpet energy, and I'm going to go ahead and put that up here. I'm going to play to that crowd. Maybe I'll get the majority and get that point, but maybe I'll just put one cube out and hit this threshold. We don't know. It's unknown. We shall see. We're going to jump back over to the computer player. Computer player is going to finish a song, but you'll notice the moods do not match. Therefore, it's going to just take all of the energy cubes of its type and put it out there. That's, done. That's, that's the whole finish song action for the computer player because the moods did not match. Now, we're going to play a song, flip over a card. Oh, that's a, that's a pricey meatball. It's going to take four energy total, three saxophone and one drum, and it's going to follow me over here. So it's going to put a bunch of its cubes onto this. The moods don't match, which is fine, but that just means it's guaranteed going to put all of its cubes out. So I'm kind of less incentivized to try and put all of these cubes on there because I don't think I can win that majority. So I might just put one cube out um, and just to get that threshold bonus. Yeah, so let's figure out what I'm going to do. 
I mean, it is my turn now. The computer player is done because it played the song. Oh, this is, a <laughs> this is a tough situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put one cube out here so I can at least get that threshold bonus. It's not worth fighting to get a majority to get two points. So now this is what's cool. Because the moods match, I have that option of putting out as many or as few cubes as I want, taking this returning energy and putting it back into my band. So I can rearrange the, just the new energy that I'm taking back however I want. Um, I think I should put two in trumpet because I have more songs that cost trumpet and one in saxophone. I'll figure that out. <laughs> so this song is played. This song is now discarded. I cannot play it again. Um, boy, let's see. I want to try and get majority on one of these two at least. I certainly don't want the computer player to have majorities here if it's already going to get this one. So maybe I should fight over here. Um, yeah, what, what songs do I have? The, the other problem is I don't have a lot of songs that match mood. So um, it's, it's, I think it's time that I have to just make a big move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one dollar so I finish the song, my next step is I can tip. So I'm going to spend a dollar to tip and take one of my energy from the reserve and put it onto my active, you know, put it, make it active again, energy that I can spend. Now I'm going to go play a jazz standard. So I have to pay however many dollars this shows. I'm paying one dollar to take this card and make it available to me. And I'm going to put two saxophones. Uh, two trumpet energy and one drum energy. But you'll notice that this particular card has this, the Fleur de Lis, which is, I don't know how to pronounce, it's French. <laughs> There's a big French emphasis in New Orleans, so that makes sense. Uh, and I'm going to be able to put this wherever I want, and it's going to match moods. This is basically a wild symbol. Uh, and so is, is it worth fighting for this, or is it worth trying to fight over here? I think what I'm going to do is go over here. I think I can try and outmaneuver this guy by putting more cubes out, or maybe I'll take a bunch of cubes back and go somewhere else. Well, <laughs> uh, TBD, to be determined what I'm going to do. So that's my turn. Jumping back to the computer player, uh, the moods do not match. So the computer player has to dump all of these energy cubes onto that, um, and that's, that's all it's going to do for its playing uh, yeah, playing, finishing a song. So now we go to the play a song, so it's going to start a new one. Oh, curses! It's going to put three energy out. It's going to go to where I'm going. And unfortunately, the, uh, the, the moods don't match. So that means it's going to put all of these cubes out here. So uh, that's the end of its turn. Now I have to decide if I want to try and put all five cubes out here to at least tie it. Um, yeah, I might... I might as well do that. So I'll put all five cubes out. So I'll at least hit the threshold. Maybe I'll tie it even. This token flips from the one over to the two and goes back into the jazz standard area. That's the thing about jazz standards. You can just always play them. No one does not want to hear those songs. You know what I mean? Um, you just have to pay more because they're slightly less effective if you keep playing the same song over and over again. Now, because I did this, I get to take another $1 tip back. I get to do that. Um, oh boy, this is tough. All right, so I've put all of this energy out. I'm gonna take a gamble here. I think that I can do okay if I spend, th uh, so that was my finish a song action. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tip. I'm gonna take the three bucks and tip so that I can get three energy back. And I'm gonna put um, two in trumpet and one in saxophone, so that for my last, for the last part of my turn, I'm gonna play this song over here. This is gonna be hard, but um, there's a chance that he will not be able to tie with me, and that would be great. <laughs> End of my turn, over to the computer player. We're gonna see, he's, uh, because the moods don't match, he's gonna just move all of the cubes over. We're now tied five and five over here. I don't like that. It's going to move to playing, and... Ooh, yes, this is what I wanted to see. So it is going to go ahead and um, play 
over where I'm playing, so it's going to take three energy. Ooh, look, this happened. Now, it's run out of energy. To make the game harder, I'll now just take energy cubes of a different color, and it's going to count as the computer player energy. So this now is going to have all of this energy to work with as well. It doesn't run out. It just keeps going and going and going like some sort of robotic, uh, I don't know, uh, advertising thing. I'll think of the, I'll think of it later. <laughs> um, okay, so it's going to put three energy cubes knowing that this is all the, essentially the same color, the, the, the computer player. It's going to take all three of these and put it over into the song area where I'm playing in. Thankfully, I can outperform it. That's great. So uh, that's the end of his turn. It comes over to me. Hooray. I get to put all of this energy on here because the moods do not match. The beads and the hearts don't match. So all I get to do is shift all of my cubes onto this space. I don't get any payout bonus for it. I don't get anything else. That just happens. And now that was the finish action. I can choose to tip, but I've got no money. I'm broke because I had to spend it all to get more energy. Not the computer player. Computer player can just keep getting energy. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. All right. So that means I can't tip. And now I have no more energy in my band. My, my band members are pooped. They've been playing all night, busking on the streets, trying to get some tips that I keep spending. <laughs> so I have to pass. That is the last action that I'll get to take. I'm going to pass. That means I am done. Now to make things even more difficult for me though, the computer player is going to take one last turn. One more turn than me. Uh, so let's go ahead here. It's going to finish up its song. Uh, yeah, it's going to finish up the song that it is playing and it's going to put all of those tokens up here because it's... Uh, okay, so here's, here's the logic of the AI when it's finishing a song. The moods do match, right? The first thing it's going to try and do is if it has not met this threshold, it'll put out enough cubes to hit that threshold and take the remaining energy and put it back. You saw that earlier, right? How it only put one cube out onto this card and took the remaining three or so back onto its card. <laughs> what this means now is that because it's already hit this threshold, it's already got the three cubes on there, it's going to just dump all of these that it can on there because the moods match and in... Uh, likewise fashion because of of, of uh, uh, just like if if you put all the cubes out on a song that matches mood you would earn a one dollar tip well the computer player is going to do the same thing and it's going to earn a one dollar tip which it never has to spend to get more energy tokens as I mentioned so that makes it really really rough but let's see what happens well, it is the end of the round, right? Because I, I passed, the computer player finishes its last turn. And so that will be basically all it does is, is it'll finish playing the song and then it'll be done. So let's go to the scoring phase of the round. Now we're going to be comparing my white. I don't know why all these cubes got mixed up. Um, my white cubes here against all of the computer player cubes, including this green one, just, just, just how it's going to have to go. So we now score up. We see the majority here. I did not quite get the majority. So that's too bad. The computer player is going to get two bucks for that. It's also going to get a third dollar because it hit this one cube threshold. But you'll notice that I also get this threshold. So I didn't win the majority, but I get one dollar for just having hit this threshold. Just for that. The computer player, on the other hand, is going to get uh, two bucks for the majority and one buck there. So it's getting three. I'm going to turn in uh, two singles to give it a fiver. So it's currently six bucks ahead of me, and that's not great. Over here, this is basically a wash because we both tied with exactly five cubes. So we're both going to get the $4 payout, and then we're both going to get the threshold payout because we each have at least one or at least two cubes on there, so we each get a dollar. So, uh, i.e., we each get five bucks. So that's all right. Over here, this is what I fought very hard to get, right? This is the, the gamble that I took at the end of the round. So I have seven cubes to its six. So I get the $5 payout and it does not, which is great news for me. Uh, and then it's going to get the, uh, uh, we're both going to get the $3 payout because we each have at least three cubes on here. So it's going to turn in two and grab another five. I'm going to go and grab three bucks. Now, at the end of this round, at the end of the first round, this is the position that we would be in. I would have 14 bucks. He would have 
15. So this is already just a narrow game, and if this had come out differently, then the computer player would have been way ahead. So it's not tough, or it's, it's, it is tough, it's not easy to just win against it. The last thing I guess I forgot to, to do here is these tokens. The mood tokens are actually awarded to the winners. Um, it, it's not as important in solo play because the computer player wins all ties, but if you're watching this to try and get an idea of how the game plays in general, um, if there's a tie, neither person is going to get the mood token. It just goes away. Over here, since I had the majority, I would get this mood token. In a normal game, these mood tokens act as tiebreakers in case there's any need for a tiebreaker. Most money at the end of the game, determining who's the start starting player for the new round. Um, but in a in a uh, solo game against the computer bots, the the CPU the, the computer players are always going to break all ties. So this is what an example of the, of the game would look like. I'm going to just uh, end it here at the end of this first round to give you a very nice idea of how it's going to play. Um, and I'll just explain what the next round would consist of. I would take energy cubes back and I would have three in reserve and four on each of my instrumentalists once again, right? And then we would start a new round. But these cards over here are going to wipe. Uh, and the computer player would just get all of its energy back and just be this massive unstoppable force. These cards go away. And what will happen is, for the next round, for the second round, if we were to play one, we would have four crowd cards to be playing to, to try and manage, that he could follow me around to. And then, these would each get a mood token onto them as well. We'd play through this round, award out the majorities, and the threshold bonuses. And you can see here, for example, this one is a majority $5 payout and a threshold bonus of two. Whereas this is almost the opposite. This is a $2 majority payout, but has a threshold bonus of $5 if you have at least four cubes on it. And so these are all going to be wildly different. These energy, or sorry, these uh, mood tokens will get wiped. The crowd cards get wiped as well. And in the last round, you would have five crowds that you're playing to. And so there's a lot of opportunity for it to follow, for me to try and outmaneuver it. Uh, and it, like I said, it's not, it's not simple. Uh, also, these, uh, these tokens that I spent, the money that I spent on these tokens, would flip back over to the one side at the beginning of each round. So I only had to have to pay $1 in order to, to get that. So, this, like I said, this, the solo mode in this game is very engaging because this is just one of the three robot players I could have been playing against. The threshold bot is going to try and get these threshold bonuses on the different crowd cards, which you can see is huge for some of them, right? Especially that one that had like a four or five dollar payout. So the threshold bot's gonna try and spread evenly, which means maybe I'll be able to strategically try and get more majorities than it, but I have to also chase thresholds because if I don't get at least a good number of these threshold bonuses, it's gonna just shoot ahead of me. And then the last one is, is the uh, the Moody Bot, <laughs> and the Moody Bot is one that's just going to try and like fight me for majorities. It's definitely going to look for uh, look for crowds where I have more cubes than it, and it's just going to dump as much into it as possible so that uh, you know so I don't win majorities. So uh, I, Carla had mentioned to me briefly that f the Follow Bot is the easiest and. You know, uh, in a way, it's also the most predictable. Uh, but the fact that there's three different ways to play uh, solo, the the fact that it is a real, you know, goal that you're playing against. It's not just like, a, hey, if you hit 60 bucks at the end of the game, you know, average job or whatever. I feel the tension when I'm playing the solo because I've got to fight against something that's organically earning points, or organically earning money. And the, the big thing, as I mentioned before, is that I have to pay tips. If I want to get energy back into my band, I have to spend money. I have to spend money just to get some of this stuff out into here. Whereas the uh, the the solo bot, if he runs out of cubes, just grab more cubes. If he runs out of these cubes, just grab more cubes out of the box, right? It's, it's I, I don't know if that would ever happen. I've not seen that myself. <laughs> but the, the fact that, yeah, it's a challenge and it has a few rules that are simplified. Also, at the end of each round, you would shuffle all of these cards back into its deck. And so I like this because it's unpredictable. You don't know how often it's going to match moods and how often it won't exactly. 
But this, uh, this simple system of using all the starting player cards also prevents it from ever having one of these cards that has like the wild symbol. So there's a few things that can make the game easier as the human player where you can use these wilds, you can use the special ability cards that I didn't even use this game. Um, but the computer player also has a lot easier because it doesn't have to buy more cards. You just flip one over and play it according to the according to the AI rules. So that's the that's the solo mode for the game. It is intriguing. It feels very uh, fulfilling to try and win. There's some strategy. There's some reading. There's some luck. And so overall, it's engaging. So this is Chris from Meeple Overboard here, just giving you that example playthrough of. Big Easy Busking. Uh, if you are interested, go and check out the Kickstarter page and go check out Weird Giraffe, Weird Giraffe Games' uh, other games. They do a great job, beautiful production, and like I, I want to emphasize again, these are just prototype components, so everything is going to be a little bit more refined. The order of the symbols and the cards is going to match the order of the uh, the your band here a little bit better in the final version. Go check out the Kickstarter page and see what else there's going to be uh, upgraded on here, but that's my thoughts. I like this one. Beautiful theme, cool game, fun solo mode. My name is Chris from Meeple Overboard. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.